Father, thanks for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, all right, all right, all right. How many keys do you have? I don't have it. I tell you, if you can somehow make tithing a major thing, I, I just somehow feel that you become far ten times more successful in the ministry. Tight alone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Key number seven. Well, it's seven in my book. <laughs> well, it's seven in my book, so. No, no, no. There's no six. <laughs> Number seven. I'll give you six later. The key of valuing small things. And Eliab, his eldest brother, when he heard, when he spake unto the man, Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep? Amen. Amen. Now, th this next key is a key of valuing a very small thing. You see, is it not true? Yeah. And that is what you can have. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, that's what you can have. That is what you can have. And as long as those few sheep or something small is despised in your eyes, I can assure you Without a doubt, you will never be a great person. Yeah. So, my effort as a father to make you become great in the ministry is not to move you from there. Because I don't despise that place in Axim or Hafasini or Enchi. I don't despise it. And as until you value it and you see in it the thing that is in it, you'll never have a great thing. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. It applies in every sphere of life. Where when I when I got a house to stay in, you know, uh Enjoy the view of. When I got a place to stay in, it was far away from what I was used to. Because I, I grew up, I didn't know anyone in Dansoman where I grew up. But that was what. I had. Because every person who God wants to raise up slowly has to start from a small thing. And when the thing is put to you, I don't like this one. That's the end of your ministry. That's the end of you. You're finished. You are finished. You, you are finished. You are finished. 
Because you despised that which was given to you. If I look in my family, my house, I have somebody in my house called Charles. He is, even my mother was saying it to me yesterday, she said that this man is like the, these children, it's like their uncle. It's like their uncle. He has been in our house for so many years before even Daniela was born. Yeah. He's like, it's like an uncle. It's like, a, it's, if not that he is, at his wedding, my mother was there, my mother in law, and the family is it's, it's not. Huh? He has a family member. Fully. Huh? You were there at his wedding. Yeah. He's like that, the uncle. Do you know where I got him? He was selling dog chains by the roadside. Yeah. I give him my, the key to my room. He's the only person I give the key to my, my bedroom. That I'm going, last week I was going somewhere, I wanted him to repair something in the room. I gave him a key to my room. I'm going, here's the key to my, my room. And do it and come. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've come for this camp. I came with my chef. I have a chef. He's called Ofori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just served uh, 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 some Bishop Saki and uh, Bishop Eddie something to eat. Yeah. Now you are not going to start with chef, chef, <laughs> Do you know where I got him from? Do you know where I got him from? From a village. From a village with a hot, hot roof. His mother sells kinky. <laughs> In that village. He's now a chef. I brought him. I'm, pl- I'm planning to travel with him. He's it's it's a chef. Excellent chef. You cannot get Chef Francois. <laughs> uh, chef, I mean, uh, 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 Julien or something. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. Yeah. Yeah, you, what you can get is somebody from the village. That's what you can get. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? And that is what can become. Uh-huh. That thing is what can become that. Great thing. That's the point that I'm trying to make. If everything, all right, the key is that that small thing which seems to have been given is not a demotion in any form or fashion. It's not a demotion at all. You have been given that little church in Mali. It's not a demotion at all. It's everything is that church. Everything in the world is that church. Your car is in the church. Your house is in the church. Your children's education is in the church. From that place, you'll be surprised that your children can go to university anywhere in the world, whatever. From that thing that has been given to you in Orda, in Kede, in this, in the, everything is, is, is all in it. But what I'm saying is that if you feel that it is nothing to you, throw it away and be there because we are not going to struggle to force you to see something you cannot see. The financial situation itself will force you to see what you are not seeing. That's why I'm going to show you Bonke's life story. I, I don't think I'll show you all, but I'll show you one or two. There are four DVDs. But I'll show you one or two. The one that has so do we have, I we said, the one that has, shows you the beginning of his life. Yeah. 
so that you will appreciate it. So when the thing is given to you, can you imagine you go to the labor ward and you push? Ooh, 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 then comes and says, Ah, it's too small. <laughs> it's too small. I can do it. Ah, what is this small thing like this? I wanted a daughter. I wanted a son. What is this? Out. Is that all? Is that all after nine months? Is that all? Bring the dustbin. Bring the dustbin. Let me. You don't have a dustbin. So I can just put it in. Because I wanted a sun. I wanted a sun. I wanted a sun. Put in a dustbin and throw away. I wanted a sun. Not this little this thing. When you touch the head, Christ, there's no bone in the head. That's all that. Marlon, that's the only thing that can be given to you. Something very small. Have you found a dustbin? Yeah. Bring the baby. Come. Open. Uh, we, we put the baby in. Uh, put it in. Oh, it's smelling. Take it away. Because we wanted what? A son. <laughs> a daughter. With breasts. Not this. That you have to to feed. <laughs> what do you think? I, I wanted somebody who would send me money every month. I wanted somebody who send me every month money every month from abroad. And look at what you have given me. Rather something that I have to spend money on. Ah, you seeing something? Yeah. And what I'm trying to tell you is that the thing you hold in can become something that will spend, send money to you every month. But no one is given the grown up version. No one is given the grown up version of the thing. All of us have that same story. I hope I'm making. Huh? Yeah. Eric, what do you think? Yeah. So, number eight. I'm talking about how to come out of obscurity. How to come out of obscurity. The next one is the key of rolling up your sleeves and doing menial jobs. Roll up your sleeves. Can somebody close the door, please? Do you remember yesterday? Nana Kutu was telling us about the white guy. Stand up, the whites. What did you tell us about the whites? What are the things that this guy does? He rolls out his sleeve and he does what? He farms. He farms. What farms? What farms? Palm nuts farm. He has, um, he has cassava, he has, he grows vegetables as well. And, um, he has chicken. Yeah. Does he have pigs? No, he, he doesn't have pigs. <laughs> what else does he do? And then, I, I had before, he also used to keep antelopes. No, deer. Yeah, deers as well. 
But that one I didn't see it. I wasn't. Use it for what? Uh, you know, he keeps it. Yeah, dear. That's it. He has a school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they built a school as well. He built a school. Yeah. Yeah. They built a school. No, for themselves. <laughs> for the children. Yeah. Okay. It's a key. One time I was in debt and I had to roll up my sleeves and go and work in a post office box. Post office. I work in a post post box. Uh, sit down. Yeah. And I did it. Because I had to do it. And if you have to roll up your sleeves. Not if you have to. You have to. Mr. Big Shot. You just come and you are a big shot. You see, God has to use a revolution to be able to turn you into a real big shot. Because do you know that it took a lot of visions and dreams and other things to make me accept certain things. That's a crisis actually. That made me accept to do certain jobs. I mean, to, to operate in a certain way. Because even the picture of big, big shotism is something I don't like. Yeah. So God had to use problems to make me have certain facilities that certain executives have. I have dreams problems, even traveling. The way I travel, I used to travel in a certain way. Till one particular day I was coming, I was traveling, but I had a crisis at the airport. You know, as I was checking in, all kinds of confusion. You know, it was, I always saving money. Saving money. By the time I even left, after I overcame that problem at the airport, and I eventually got out. Almost didn't get out, but when I eventually got out, something said to me, look, you have to grow up and know how to travel in a certain way. Do you understand? But I didn't just get up and say, today, I am a big man. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to travel this way or that. It was a crisis which made me Realize. Yeah. Or you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is what you have to ask yourself, all of us. Half a sini, axim, enchi. Far away, in the north, Every northern pastor who doesn't have cows. I'll ask you a question. Pastor Prince is a farmer. In other words, he studied farming. <laughs> and I always tell him, Prince, tell them the truth. When we are driving, I say, Prince, do you see this man here? If somebody is coming to the hotel in a helicopter. Are you there? Yeah. I always said, I'll, I'll be driving. I said, Prince, see this guy? He has not been to school. He's not gone anywhere. He has not studied. Prince, what have you studied? Agriculture, what? Animal science. And you've done masters. In what? Animal what? Physiology. <laughs> But this guy, who doesn't have even Charlie Watty, he has got 20 cows and he's moving around with them. He's able to rear cows, beef, in Accra. Yeah, he's able to rear. By you with your physiology, animal this, animal that, studied in Denmark, eh? or where? Norway. 
travel across with trucks, doing farming work and so on. You cannot have even one cow or even one goat for all your studies. Or even a rabbit. <laughs> It, it, you see, it shows something about us. That, that is so what we have, what we know, the opportunities we have. That's why I really forced myself. Now I have some cows. You know, I have some cows now. Recently, one of my daughters was getting married. She was coming having a celebration. She said, Oh, she's getting married. And I thought, I said, Look. As a big man, what can I do? <laughs> I said, I'll give you a cow for your wedding. <laughs> and I gave her a cow. So take a cow. I want to supply the Bible school with a cow every month for them to eat it. Yeah, in the school and the orphanage. It's my vision. If this man who can do have Charlie, what does have anything? He's able to have cows in Accra. Can I not also have some? I have to roll up my sleeves. And one day, when you see that I'm rich, and I have flocks and heads, don't be jealous of me. Yeah? Because, don't be jealous. I have flocks and heads. So, a bishop, do you know that he has over 1,000 cows? So, yeah. When I was into cows, people were laughing at me. A day will come. You see, give them a cow. I'll be sharing cows to people. When I have to pay you, I'll count it in cows. <laughs> give them three cows. What do you think? Yeah. But you see, our people, you sit in that town, uh, nothing. My father in law, very rich man. There was a time in his heydays. One of the things my wife told me, he had a lot of goats. Kaka, is it true or is it not true? <laughs> Plenty goats in Takrad. <laughs> it's the teeth into goats. The rich people. <laughs> Somebody who has more articulated tracks than anybody else. He has got another side business of goats. Plenty. And you can have even one goat. Why don't you roll up your sleeves, brother? You will never buy meat in your house again till you die. You don't think so? Why is it that a white man is able to overcome all the problems that are associated with it? But as for you, when you hear the problem, your epilepsy comes. Your epilepsy and your Down syndrome comes. You can't speak. You just stand up. What kind of darkness is that? <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying. What kind of darkness is that? I don't accept it. Huh? I don't accept it. I can't accept it. Look at Ghana. We have no food. And you'll be saying, oh, this and that and that. We have we import chicken. We import cassava. We import everything. Pig feet, chicken, everything. I mean, you think about it. Uh, what is in us that cannot make enough chickens in this country for us to have enough chicken in this country that not even one chicken will be brought from outside the country into this country? It's fantastical. But the reason that you cannot understand why it cannot be is the same reason why you cannot also have because because you need to roll up your sleeves and do practical dirty things menial things in order to have that kind of prosperity and it is that that we don't want to do mm, that's what we don't want to do it's like we don't want to get into certain things it's true and i'm telling you it is a key to becoming a wealthy person. 
Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, roll up. Roll up your sleeves. My wife was a lawyer, a practicing lawyer. I sent her to work in a factory. Roll up your sleeves, sister. You are married to Doug. And we don't have money. Get to the job. And she went up and down, going to work at a factory. One day, the police arrested her. Who is she? You have seen her walking here up and down. Yeah. Mr. Big Shot. Huh? Big man. You can't do what? I drive myself from Accra to the north of Ghana. I drive myself. Somebody at my level, they don't drive themselves. I drive myself. I drove myself here. I drive myself everywhere. I don't need a driver. I don't want people to be in my car listening to what I'm saying. It's like you, 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 I mean, you, you save money. I don't need anything that I don't need, I don't have. But we are not like that. Have you seen a big man in Ghana who drives himself? Eh? I'm asking you, have you seen some before? Eh. Can I see a young big shot? They open the car, he sit inside, the spark driver. Call the driver, 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 driver. Tell me, is it not true? Is it not like that in Nigeria too? Is your mate? Ah, okay. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Small big shot. You have a secretary. Do you know what is a secretary? What is a secretary? You have a secretary. Goodness gracious. You have an administrator. Hey! Do you know how you. What makes a person need an administrator? For how many years in the church we have worked without having any such person? Now you have employed us because you saw it as, as a picture. So please, roll up your sleeves and get to the job. You've made me spoil my glasses. All right. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. All right. First Samuel 16. You see, David started by rolling up his sleeves. We are going to carry armor. We are not going to fight. Amen. Amen. What do you think? Is it a good idea? Key number nine. The key of turning away from despisers of your life and ministry. Psalm 64 says that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. Amen. Turn away from people who despise your, what you are doing. It does not help at all. Amen. Amen. Including your uh, including your close people. Amen. Amen. Including your close people. Are you with me? Turn away from them. Turn away if it's from your family. Turn away from your friends. Turn away from people who speak quietly and don't respect you. 
I can mention people that I have turned away from decisively. I turn away from them because I realize they did not respect me. And they did not believe in me. What you respect, Mike Medoc says, what you respect, it will come to you. You are trapped. If you respect it, it will come to you. Yeah. You attract it to you. Because you place value on it and you treat it with value. And because you treat it with value, it comes to you. One time I went to a preaching at a certain church in Accra. And when I finished preaching, they gave me an honorarium and everything and they went. I took an offering. I took my time and took the offering for them and all that. As they gave me the offering and I got into the car, I said to myself, I won't come here again. If they invite me, I won't come again. Because I felt that they did not appreciate me. I have not opened the envelope or anything, but I just felt in my heart, I knew that they did not appreciate me. And it was confirmed later on. Because I found out this guy saying all sorts of funny things. I said, they were just having me there. But I said as I, I was stepping, I remember the door was open, I was stepping to the car, and he gave me the envelope. Oh, God bless you. Ah, this Christian went. I received the envelope myself. God bless you. I said, I won't come here again. You have to move away from things that don't, things that people that despise you. They don't believe in what you are doing. Eh? Because I'll tell you, there's a lot of psychological battle for your, your, your life. And you need to do everything that makes it work. Oh. Yeah. So, so that's why you need people that believe in you. People that believe in what you are doing. That's where you can flourish. Yeah. Because I may call this person and say it's my chef. But somebody may not call that person a chef. So I, I may be the only person that can take that person as a chef in the world. Yeah. So stay where you are loved. And choose people to be with you when you are who respect you. Recently we asked some pastors to move around. You go here, you go here, you go here. I was watching them as they were moving around. If there's a war in Ghana and I moved out of Ghana, I will go with some people. I wouldn't change certain people that are working with me. Even if the circumstance changes. Never. Because they are part of me like socks are on my leg. Yeah. Because it's not that I'm the best. I'm not. Nor perfect. But you need people that respect you. They like you. They believe in you. Oh yeah. That's the only environment under which you can become great. So those of you who have chosen people as assistants and you have assistants who don't believe in you, those are some of the reasons why your church can't work. You must have lovers and respect people. Respect and love, they are very close. They are like twins. You must have that kind of person with you. So that's why when uh, some of them will request and say, can I go with this person? I know. So yeah, go with the person that you think you can go with. Because it's not easy to get somebody to, to, to respect. Recently, you know, uh, Pastor Shmuel was having some problems with some of his people. I said, look, the same instruction that you give to these guys who are giving problems, when you give that same instruction to another person, there will be no problem. Even if the instruction you are giving is a mistake. The one who loves you, the instruction, the mistake instruction will not bring about a problem with the person who loves you. But the person who doesn't love, when you shift more and you make a mistake in what you are doing, you are done. I mean, in the attitude, you are confirming to the person how you are not qualified. To be with the person. So for me, I, only, I need that environment. I need an environment of trusting people, loving people, people who think that you are good, people who think you are. Because I, I know the world. There's this world, there's this world. All of us have our funny ways. 
Kevin, you need it. And you know, it's interesting, eh? As you go on in ministry, let's say you are married, your spouse becomes easily one of the people who doesn't believe you. <laughs> and is not impressed. Not as an evil thing, but generally, you know, I can be standing in the pulpit, seriously about to preach, and my wife will do this. I should smile. I'm too serious. Nobody in the church can signal me that. Smile, smile. But she will signal me. Smile, smile. You are too serious. <laughs> hey! Hey, you hey. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll just start laughing. It, it's funny to me. <laughs> So, and, 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 and if, you, if you make the mistake of being married to somebody who in ministry has a strong other opinion or has a different mind that doesn't correspond to your mind, you, you can have an opposition party <laughs> planted in your house. Every decision you take Objection, my lord. <laughs> hey! Some people have a, a, like an opposition party in the house, especially guns, gun women. Gun women have a problem, a problem with understanding in order to flow. And I do not apologize for what I'm saying. At all. Yes, I'll say. <laughs> they cannot understand. They cannot yield. They cannot agree. They not surrender. They not give in. Give up. Stop fighting. If you want them to say yes, they will say yes. They will say no. If you want them to say no, they will say yes. It's fantastic. I can point to you several either divorces or marriages that are divorced internally. And you will see gang women without understanding. Yeah. And they are usually very beautiful. Beauties. Beauties. <laughs> hey! It's fantastic. So, you may end up turning away from that person towards another or towards others who flow. And when you come to the church, they'll treat you like Lord of Lords when you arrive. Oh, Pastor. But remember that sweet smiling sister who is saying, Pastor, if you marry the person, I lost another of the same kind. The sweet. Saying, Pastor, glory be to God, it will change. Yeah. So that is why you have to overcome. If it happens, you have married an opposition party. Try to win. You are rewarded for overcoming. You have to. You have to stay in it and overcome. Your marriage, you have to overcome in it. If you have to teach on respect, do some teachings in the house. Huh? You have to you have to do some teachings from time to time. You have to 
inform the household as to who is the head of the house. Hmm. You have to win. Do you understand? Everything you have to win. You can't run away. Do you see? A marriage is once and for all. That's what you get. What you had is what you had. You can't change it. You have to win. Oh, you don't understand my message. You have to win. Try to win. You'll be rewarded because you overcame. The circumstance you found yourself in. God help you to overcome in that particular circumstance. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's not easy to create a, a flourishing environment of where you do well. That's, that's, a, that's the apple tree environment of Europe. That's why apple trees grow in Europe. There's a climate, a feeling, then the tree is growing. But you bring to Sahara, you bring to, what do you call it? It's nothing. And as the climate and the environment gets worse, fewer and fewer are able to do well. Yeah. Look, I'm telling you something. I cannot overemphasize this point. That the climate and the environment in which you minister greatly affects... I have noticed, it's not depend on my fasting, how well I do. It does not depend on my fasting. It does not depend on my preparation. It, it depends on the people. I've, I'll say 90%, it depends on who I'm ministering to. Dep- on my flow. Yeah, my flow and the level of the ministry depends on who I'm ministering. 90% more than myself. As I keep moving around, I realize, you go to this place, you see that it's a complete... You go to a place, the pastor will tell you, the pastor will tell you, that loyalty message that you preach, it really helps. He's telling you those type of messages. He said, preach about anything. But I said, that loyalty message. He's saying, preach loyalty to my people. And what do you do? You open your book and then you, you, you flow. Because see, that's what he wants. He doesn't want a good performance. He wants something that will kill the steppers in the church. And when the pastor welcomes you, a church, you see, a church, there's only one person who is important when you go and preach. It's the pastor of the church. That's what many visiting preachers don't know. The pastor's welcoming environment is the main thing. Because you can come and say whatever I want to come. If the pastor doesn't like it or doesn't believe it, that's your last day. You are never coming back there again. You will never come there again. Because congregation doesn't invite. <laughs> congregation don't send letters. We collectively have come together and have decided that you should come and preach to us. I remember one place that I, I was invited to that they didn't invite me again. I kept on meeting church members and reports. Oh, everybody is asking of you. Everybody is asking of you. Where? But <laughs> everybody is asking of me, but the pastor himself is not asking of me. Forgive. Everybody was asking where you were. Everybody was asking. Everybody saying, "Oh, why? We're expecting you. You're the only one who didn't come this year." I said, I just smiled. I said, well, once the main person doesn't ask of me, I cannot go there. So you cannot flourish in an environment of people that don't really believe in you. You need it. You need it. All right. The next one. The key of commanding your family to help you and to follow you. It says, For I know him, he will command his children 
and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him Genesis 18 verse 19 Amen. Amen Let me tell you something Your family can help you greatly in the ministry One of the ways you can come out of obscurity Is to get your family to help you You know I was preaching the other night about airways And how somebody was advising Reverend Steve, my friend Reverend Steve He was advising He said that look If you are sending somebody to a water region If you don't send somebody from there it will not work. And he told me, he said, if you send somebody who is from there, the people will say, our brother has been on it. Is it not true? Pontius. Is it Pontius? <laughs> Pius. Pius. Are you unaware? Uh, they will say what? You have been on it. And so we have to help Huh? Support him to do well. Because he has been honored as an ambassador. Yeah. He represents us. When he does well, he represents all of us. That's how they always think. That's why they support Rollins day or night. It's Yevuvi, our white baby. <laughs> Yevuvi. Now, Big Daddy, is your, is your family helping you? You say, I know Abraham, he will make his family flow. I'm giving you a key. I'm giving you a key. Listen to a key to bring you out. Let your family help you. I can mention to you seven times that my family helped me. Yeah. To start a church in Geneva, my sisters came together and bought me a ticket and said, come to start the first branch of the church. They flew me into Geneva and I started a church there. And I, who did I stay with? I stayed with Beatrix, my sister. I stayed in the house. I ate her food. I bathed in her bathroom. I used her toilet. I remember exactly where. My sisters, my uh, big sister, this one again, she wanted, I wanted to be in full time ministry. I spoke to her again. I said, Can you help me? So I can help. You see, that's why it's not good to quarrel. Because if you quarrel with your brothers and sisters, my message cannot work now. Do you get what I'm saying? The message cannot work. What I'm preaching about cannot help you. I talked to my sister and she said, I will help you. The word she used was that if you are going to preach and people are going to be saved, they are going to schools and all that. I really believe in that. I like that. I will give you money. Give me money. God bless her. God bless her. I entered into full time ministry. My mother helped me. When the church could not afford, to give me a house. My mother. She need not have done that. She need not have done that. What do you think? Huh? My mother drove with me around Accra. She took me to. At, um, beyond Domi. To look for houses. My mother. She helped me. Even when I wanted to do business, she gave me money. At different times, I would see her and say, Mommy, this is what I want to do. That's why I was getting her. One day she went and brought what? The fire. <laughs> For a maturity conference. <laughs> become who you can become. <laughs> I am saying, you see, he says, I know this person that I'm sending, he will involve his family. Yeah, he will get his family involved. His family will help him. He will make his family join, make his family be involved, let his family be in the thing. 
than my wife's family. She got today her her family, her family are all in the church. This one here sitting here. Prophet Baden, that's the smallest brother. Huh? He's he's a prophet. Kakra means small. Her family are all in the church. Counting money in the church. Her sister whom her father thought she's the one I wanted to marry. I'll go to the house. Then he thought I was coming for that one. So he put her in the car and take her out. But not knowing that I was... Her brothers, her brothers, sit down, you can sit down. Her brothers are pastors, her sisters, cousins, a company that prints our Healing Jesus magazine. Now they print it for us as a blessing. It costs more than $15,000 to print it once. He prints it for us free. They are all cousins. His, the wife stayed in our room where I was staying in one room. She stayed in our room. He used to visit, come and visit her in that house. We were all together. She's like she's just their sister. Relatives. They are all in the church helping. So I know Abraham. He will let us. He command his household. The dogs. Everybody will be involved in the ministry. They help. The father. The mother. They are sat. You see camp like this. His fa- My wife's father and mother have sat in a camp. For the entire camp. From morning to evening. Every day at the camp. They sit at the back there. Watching me preaching. Pastor Joel, do you remember? Yeah. And even just the respect. Yeah. See, what do you think? I can't, and it has to help me. I'm like an away. I said, I'm like an away <laughs> whose family members have helped. Yeah. Am I giving you a key? Yes. I said, am I giving you a key yes. to come out of obscurity? Yeah. You sit there and just say, You said one of my sisters who is not a, even a member of the church, you know, she just sent me an offering. She said, I should have done this a long time ago. You are such a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And I relate with all of them at different levels. <laughs> and you are there, and your family. You've quarreled, you've quarreled with your father, you've quarreled with your auntie, you don't talk to your sister, you don't talk. It's not a good thing. Or you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. It's not a good thing. Try to see that your family eh, is one of the helpful assets that you have in the, in the world. So for me, I'll say that a family member that my brother-in-law, he supported the ministry and at least his donations through my binding machines, files and all these other things. For a long time. Even. And I said, we won't pay. We won't pay. We are blessed. What do you think? Yeah. So big D, you can get your family. Even your mother. So this, my mother, she works at the orphanage, the church orphanage. My mother worked in the finance office. She worked for Becky. She came to, she come to the office all the time and worked there, filing this, that at the finance office. (laughs) Yeah. My mother. When she retired, she went to work at the church finance office. Becky she used to, to come. Yeah, brought papers to come and organize. The orphanage. She goes to the orphanage every week. She goes to clean the place, do everything, work there. That's my mother. And my wife. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Yeah. And my wife is involved. As I'm preaching now, she's also preaching somewhere. Yeah. And my wife, just, she, she, I mean, she has a, a role that she plays. You know? Yeah. <laughs> the key of family service to God. Yeah. That's the key of family service. It's the same key that I'm, I'm sharing. Huh? What do you think? You have spoiled my glasses. I'm not happy with you. All right, all right, all right. Good, good, good. Amen. How many keys do you have? Okay. You just just use your own numbering. Your own numbering. Number 11. The key of sowing seeds, spiritual seeds, in ministering to other people. Ministering And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took a harp. Alright? And played with his hands. Amen? So Saul was refreshed and was well. And the evil spirit departed from him. Amen. Amen. Now, he ministered to others. Now I was, I was sharing with someone, I said, look, one of the keys to having a certain ministry is to sow a seed. If you help somebody, you are sowing a seed of help. And you are likely to be helped. If you help somebody, you are likely to be helped in this life. When I, when I go preaching, do you know what my aim is? Huh? When I go preaching somebody's church, do you know what my aim is? My aim is to help the, the guy. That's my aim. My aim is not to minister well. Do you see? But every time I have that aim, it leads to more blessings for me. Remember I was telling you recently about this church I went to minister in. And I went inside. I mean, I want to help the person and also minister what God has told me to. I believe God wants me to minister, which is usually in that line. When you do that, it seems to rather open more doors, even though I may not, I may be able to have a miracle service. Because I have, I have, I have miracle services, but I, I leave the miracle service out to help the guy. Help the church. When I first was in uh, London, I was going around helping Pastor Michael Bassett to have his church. I never knew that. I used to share Kenneth taking books. I never knew that one day somebody also shared my books. I used to share. I bought the books with my own money. I shared. Shared the little books like that. I gave, I gave, I'll go travel on a tube to and give somebody just one of those little books. Travel far! That Kenneth Hagin was great. And then Michael Bassett's church was great. You should come there. Victory Church. That's all. I don't think about whether I'm great, whether I'll get money. You know, that mind. You see, so David coming to the house, he just ministers to Saul, Saul's problems, Saul's needs, Saul's difficulties. 
just ministers to him. He doesn't make himself great. But he opened the door for him to stay in this palace. And by ministry, you see, uh, let me say something, especially your first opportunity. Don't try to be great. Try to help. Because people like helpers. And people like helpful people. You can help somebody. Help the person. God will bless you. Yeah. So, you know, pastors, some of us are going to be getting an opportunity to go around Collins to go and minister. Maybe you have to go to St. Lucia. When you go there, don't, don't think, you know, I'm going to demonstrate something. Don't demonstrate anything. Think about this pastor struggling in St. Lucia. And how what is happening here can be helped. That's all. A minister to, to Saul. It will open doors for you in the palaces of this life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. You see the other churches in your town where you are in Lubumbashi and Kinshasa. Is it Kinshasa or Kinshasa? Kinshasa. Kinshasa. And Lusaka. You see, Pastor, Pastor Sawyer, if you became concerned about other churches in Lusaka and in Zambia, that they really need, there are so pastors all over. They really need something like loyalty or a CD or a tape. You may think you are wasting your time. Or what you are doing is not contributing to Lighthouse in Lusaka working. Huh. See, it's a spiritual thing. You see, the direct doing of what you are doing doesn't make your church work. But you will be surprised that it rather opens your ministry in a way that you may not know. Or even God may send somebody to come and stand inside your church and behave like how you are behaving. That is here to talk to people. He is here to stabilize people. Only one person like that can make all the difference. God, <laughs> you, you, you saw yourself as a helper. And then God sent somebody to help. Oh yeah. Recently, one of our church members, his mother, was celebrating her 80th birthday. And they, they invited me to come for the uh, lunch. So when I, when I was going, I, I told my wife, please call so and so and tell him that I want to make a speech at the party. And he called him and told him, said, oh, sure, you can make a speech. So when I went there, I said, you know, I just came because I want to say thank you because this lady is now 80 years old. But some years ago, in 1989, 1990, this woman came to our church. I said, I want to thank you for three things. I've come there to say thank you for three things. I'm talking about help. God sent her to help us. First of all, such a prominent woman in Ghana to join the church. As I said, after that, sometimes she'll correct me and tell me, look, you need to get on with the message. You know, at that time I was talking about faith facts. It's like I'm repeating. So I should get on with it. I said, yes, ma'am. And then we flow. <laughs> then, when our church was about to be sent, we were going to sack us from the medical school canteen. Now, how can a church be in the medical school canteen? She was a member of the board of the medical school. And when they were trying to throw us out, we would have been thrown into a cardboard box at a in that far back. <laughs> that, a lighthouse was about to end. And she stood up and raised up her hands. And she, she asked the medical school, How can you want to sack my church from the medical school country? They said, Which church? Your church is rich church. Because that's where the ambassadors and the top people go. So my church is, I just, oh, my church is not rich. My church is lighthouse in the country. Oh, I said, yeah. Let this be your last time. <laughs> no, I tell you, it's a sin. God raised somebody up to come and say, No! 
No. No, this one is not about money. It's somebody who came to help you. More than any money can buy. Recently, I was driving through Sukura, Russia, through uh, Mount Probi to the, to the church. And I passed the church. Something light, something church. It is made up of these wawa boards. There's the blocks. The blocks have three levels. And then they have the overlapping wawa boards. The two by six wawa boards. You see, I know two by six, two by four, two by this. You don't know. You see, but two by six printed with a shed, something light. And the Lord told me, that's where you would have been if I have not helped you. That you would have been there. It's equally as good as you. But I've raised you up. You see, so it's just a, a, a sort of like a wild, I was like a wild person in this church which was beginning. They didn't have drums, they didn't have anything. I, as, as if I've been employed. I'll go to Streatham, I'll go to Medaville, I'll go to um, uh, Brixton, Clapham Common, I'll cross to uh, uh, Stratford, cross to um, uh, where do they hold? Wembley, all the calling people with books like this. See, it's like I've really helped the guy. Uh, his church became one of the largest churches in England. All those people were in the church. But not for any salary. Can I think I've not employed me as a distributor? I see God also sent somebody. And not only that, but other people to help. Yeah. So don't, don't, don't hold back from being a minister and a helper. To because it's kind of like a seed. And then Mr. God will also send such a person to you. In aspects of your life, you may not know. Then later on, this same woman, when we were going to buy uh, Ofer Cinema, we didn't have money. So we wrote letters. That's where I learned that writing letters for people of is useless. We didn't get even one response. But anyway, we wrote to a particular millionaire in Ghana. And she said, Write that I, I will give my house. Not her, not her residence. Her, she had an office block in town. I'll give my house as a guarantee for a loan from you as a millionaire. And he knows her. We are all Christians. <laughs> Have you seen some before? Yeah. I'm talking, I mean, I, that's why when I heard that she was having a party, I have to, because the next I hear she'll be gone. Then yeah. I'll be standing at the funeral and say, I'm coming to say, yeah. thank you, tribute. Yeah. And she will not hear it. So don't be afraid of ministering to people. Don't think of it, even. Just flow. 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 It's like ministering to somebody's child. Flow. You'll be surprised one day you'll be dead and somebody will be looking after your child. And God may raise up a kind person to come and love your children. Amen? Are you there? Alright. I'm, I'm showing you how to do what? See, but this is a very spiritual See, This last key is one of the most spiritual keys I've given. Uh-huh. Without without uh, it has this type of do this or do this it's very wild say, Pastor Sawyer, do you get what I'm saying? Huh? it's like you are there to build life as it's true what good is it when I go to this person and I introduce this book and I show him this and that and that it's like what have I? you'll be surprised and don't think about that but the way God can do like Mike Meadows says whatever you make happen for others God will make happen for you Not the man, but God. Are you there? Yeah. Key number 12. The key of walking in the light. And having fellowship with others.
Can I have some water? Cold water? Now, 1 John chapter 1 verse 7. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light. I'm not sure. (laughs) Mercy. We used to have conference here. People would say the food is too much. You remember? It's too much. Food is too much. Sacrifice to eat. The season has changed. Hmm. Now, if we have I read the verse, if we walk in the light as He is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ cleansing you is the help you need. But that comes if you walk in the light as he is in the light. Now, many of us are not walking in the light. Do you get what I'm saying? What do I mean by walking in the light? Walk where you can be seen clearly. What I mean is, live that I can see you. Do you get it? If, Bidia, can you stand up? And then, can you go behind this curtain? Just behind you. Aha, you see. Now, let's say I fellowship with her. Bidia, are you there? How's life? Is that joy? Can you see me? Okay, then come to this side a bit. You can peep through, but don't show. No, no, don't let me see you. This side, the other side. Uh huh, yeah, be, be peeping through. Uh huh, you see, she can see me, but I can't see her. You see, do you think we, are, we can have very good fellowship compared with the brother who is here? Huh? Mm, but why are you hiding behind the curtain? Are you shy? I heard your voice and I hid myself. <laughs> Look at her, look at her. <laughs> That's how our relationships are. Yeah. And there are some of us that are well hidden behind the curtains. Well, well hidden behind the curtains. And so we are not able to fellowship properly. You get it? Uh, what do you think? Yeah. So what are we going to do about it? See, can you explain this message better to the people? (laughs) Praise the Lord. (laughs) So, as Bishop was saying, where be they standing? She can see us and we can see her. So she must come to the light. Or oh, isn't that the point? So you see, I think that, um, like, the point Bishop is making, you have to be, we all have to be in the light. Because if we hear Bishop talking or ministry and so on, opens himself up and so on, talks about his marriage, talks about this, talks about this and so on. But for you, every time, oh, how is life? Talk about, about my family, family, my mother, my this, my, you, I don't know anything about you. For, for 10 years I've been struggling in, your, in the home yeah. But nobody knows so Tra- also, Struggling with what? Struggling with, with your wife Struggling with issues in the house Everybody says oh, oh By the grace of God we are winning But you are not winning <laughs> so, so it makes the relationship artificial So the day we discover that Oh this issue has been there for 10 years and so, ah, 
that's why the fellowship is not working. You are always quiet on some sides. Areas that if it's church, here you can talk about it, but some areas there, when it's no, no comments. So the person stays at a certain level. There's no flow, full flow. And so the blood is able to do its work. Does it? Not for me. I won't. Do you see? Yeah. But you know, I, I, I want to just stay on this point a bit because I think that I find it the greatest, you know, difficulty in getting into people's lives. Now, if I take somebody like Pastor Obi, I, I'll say that I, I've, been able to, I've been able to flow with him. But he, he, he's open, he talks to a point. There was a time that he wasn't open, right? Because that is that not over there. But you know, there is a level of being yourself that makes us suddenly get close. Is that, that then we will fellowship one with another. Then we can have fellowship. So actually, many of us don't have fellowship. <laughs> we have hellos and we have protocol. But we don't have fellowship. We have smiles. We have protocols. I'm, I'm not a protocol person. I don't sit in my office for people to come and give me greetings. I'm just not that way. That's not my style. We've come. We have come to greet Bishop. Hello, hello, hello. Those are the two people who can crucify you. I am a relationship. I like relationship. Deep, open. Let's flow. Because when the problem comes anyway, it's going to come. And we will come and we will be solving the problem. What do you think? Yeah? So, Pa, what do you think? Yeah. Now, many of us have relational problems. Ghanaians have relational problems. Ghanaians. You know, I never knew. When you, those of you who don't know international relations, you will not know. But there is a difference between Nigerians and Ghanaians. Recently, there was a lady who has lived. She's been posted to Ghana to work in the U.S. Embassy. But she worked in the U.S. Embassy. Are you listening? Listen to this one. She worked in the U.S. Embassy in Lagos, in, in Abuja, for five years. So she was, she, has been, she was taken back to America and she was brought to Ghana. So, somebody met her and asked her, Oh, I'm sure you, you are happy. You are very glad that you've been brought to Ghana. You know what the lady said? She's been in Ghana now for, she's been in Ghana now for I think at least two years plus or more. She said, I'm sure you, you're happy that you've been brought to Ghana. She said, oh no. I prefer Nigeria. I said, why? She said, oh, in Ghana, I have no friends. It's an American. In Ghana, I have no friends. The people are nice. They smile at you. But that's everybody's. But in Nigeria, I have friends. This is not the first time I've heard it. Even the other day, my own mother was telling me, she said, in Ghana, she said, I have no friends. She said, your wife is my friend. And apart from your wife, Nigerians. No Ghanaian, so-called aunties and relatives. We don't, nothing like that. She said, then she mentioned that Nigeria. She said, this lady, she calls me. She all the time. This other person in the church, all of them are in church. They are, they are, these are my friends. They come, they come. He said, just across the road here. So I'll call you, come over, let's relate. No, no, no. It's like, oh yeah, oh hello. No, 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 no. Then, like leopards, go backwards. <laughs> you know, I was surprised when she said that. My own mother, when she said that. But I said, wow. Because I see, you keep hearing from different the same thing. 
That's how we are. Those are oh yeah, oh, this is it. That's it. That's the end. The rest is. It's like sex. We all, I mean, no, we all, we, we have affairs and whatever, but it's hidden. But we are equally bad. But we do it in a way. And Nigeria, I think they are more open. Shall so they get to the job? We're doing it. <laughs> but you see, it stands uh, depth of relationship. I see, are you surprised at what I'm saying? How, how many are surprised at what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've heard this from more than one person. Elijah. So I'm, I'm talking about walking in the light and engaging to a certain level. Huh? Yeah. It's, it's shallow. Oh, hello, Bishop. We've come. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> hello. How are you? But, uh, finish. That's not religion. That's protocol. We have protocol, but we don't have relationships. And depth of relationship is pastoral work anyway. But you see, it's not only the members in your church you are supposed to relate with them. When you are sent and you are a pastor of a church, you have two lines of relationship, down and up. I mean, to, to whom you've been sent and then to whom sent you. Like this, uh, what do you call it, said from Kede? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Edward. Edward. He said yesterday, the people who are coming to roof the church call him that they are coming today. But he said, this one supersedes that one because I have also a relationship with up as well as with down. You have to either wait or whatever, or come go and do it yourself. Or you don't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. So I think it's something worth discussing because I feel that there is a depth. You understand? And but that's, right, that's what I was trying to explain to you. There's that depth of relationship that is needed. You know, one of the things that people don't know is that I have a deep relationship with a lot of people. Though. Deep with a lot of people. Actually, that's what holds us together. Yeah. And so, all oh, several of us here, I will need just you and I for some time, you know, to even refresh the relationships. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you think? Any comment or idea? Some part, yes. Nigerian. So when he knew when he that I was a missionary and I was a pastor, I mean the ease with which he opened up and told me about very personal things in his life. I mean, I have there are a few Ghanaians there, but nobody has ever done that before. And I was just saying outside that, you know, I I trust this guy so much that I'll actually give him a key to my apartment. That keep this key as a spare key for me so that in case I lose my keys, I'll come for it. Meanwhile, they say Nigerians are cool, but I trust him. Because I, I feel that the Ghanaians, at least the few that I've met, they are not the, the kind of people. <laughs> I mean, they speak very badly about them, honestly. <laughs> I mean, in Quebec, if you say you're a Nigerian, it's as if you said something. I mean, yeah, yeah. We are not talking about trustworthiness. We are talking about depth of relationships, yeah. please. And I, I feel that. Yeah, okay, your point has been made. Your point has been made. Okay. Your point has been made that naturally you are getting deeper quite easily with a Nigerian brother, but you are not getting deeper with the Ghanaian. You understand? Yeah. That's that's all, and that's that's what I'm talking. About. That's. It's something that doesn't mean that it's every, all the time and everywhere, but I'm just saying that it's something that people have noticed, and I think that it's something that we should look into. Yeah. It's not, it's not about trust, worthiness, or being whatever. That's a different subject. Huh? <laughs> Some people are advising that you take your key. <laughs>
Key, Pierre, anything to say? I think this is an important. It's, it's, oh, Pastor Richard, you have something to say? Speak, speak. I need speakers. I think uh, one of the things that this brings up is uh, our understanding of even relationships. You know, because it's like, like Bishop has been given an example of people who assume that they are close to him. You know, it's like, I'm close to you, but meanwhile, you just... Do they say, what is this? I have a relationship with Bishop Yeah, I have a relationship with Bishop Dad. That's one of my best, (laughs) best friends in Ghana. You know, but, you know, I mean, if you know it, you know that what the person is calling a relationship, it's actually protocol. protocol. I mean, it's like, hi, man of God. You know, this kind of man of God. I mean, you're anointed, you're great. Some type of, you know, respect and um, honor that is given... You know, here and there. But I think that it it's reflects your understanding. Like, the last Sunday we were talking, and then we were choosing the, uh, what do you call it, mission superintendent. And then, as I said, I was saying that I mean, he was going to choose me as a missionary superintendent. And immediately, I mean, it came out that, you know, the understanding of what we are talking of, relationship. It's not, of course, when I meet this person, you know, you talk to this person, you say hello, but that thing, that thing of depth, and openness and frankness and a certain level of interaction doesn't exist or it's not there yet as at now. You can't, you know, just pick on such a person and say that this person, such a thing uh, exists. So I think what, we have, what is coming up here is bringing up and helping us to understand and for us to have real, 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 real relationships. And I mean, something that actually exists and something that is real and true People that you can count on, lean on, and build a real strong church when we have the depth of relationship. Like Bishop saying, he has a lot of deep relationship with different people. I think that's one of the things that probably has helped even the church, that he relates with different people. It, it, it adds to the loyalty and the friendship and the love that exists in the church. It's from the depth of the relationship and not just, you know, Writing notes, knowing points, knowing loyalty, hearing about loyalty, but it's the depth of the relationships that exist. Amen. (laughs) Kweku, you have something to say? Who is that? Yeah. Yeah, just speak, just speak. You see, when it started working on my mind, I realized that as I kept it to myself, the thing was growing within me. So one day I told Reverend I, and when I told Reverend I, I realized that, look, now I'm free. Because he, he advised me. He said, look, brother, do this, do this. And I said, okay, now I'm free. So I was in the car with Reverend and Bishop. And I told them. And Bishop told me that these things, it, it shouldn't even... I come around somebody like you. He advised me. And I realized that from then, I was free. I, I, could, I could think in a certain way. Even when I met the lady again, it wasn't like, you know, I could, I could do something of that sort. And all that I took out of that thing was, look, there are challenges. And along the way, there are things that you can hide. But if you be open and bare, in relationships concerning money, concerning our marriages, there are little, little things that you can hide. But if you can come out and then be open, then it builds fellowship. real and true relationship. And then the fellowship grows. And the because then the blood cleanses us. And we grow. Yeah. Uh, concerning relationships, I realize that. I realize that. Uh, I tried to flow with some friends, but, and usually when I want to make friends, I want to make it very deep. But I open my life and then they cover theirs. You know, for instance, I realized that in marriage, from, uh, from reading and loose, I realized that every problem you have is what all of us have. So, when 
you make it like uh, when you pretend like you don't have a problem and I share mine and you, you are very quiet you never talk about your wife you never talk about what is going on next time I become cool uh-huh. so uh, some, some pastor friends who came to me and then I said oh we are friends so I took the person to like my bedroom I've taken two friends you know, because I want it to be very close. You know, and we just relate because I believe that. I believe that we can have a very deep relationship and it will bless the two of us. But I realized that they never spoke about their marriage and it also affects the person's preaching. Because when you go and preach and you even say what is going on in your church, you'll be surprised that it's a it's an loss of, of what is going on in that particular church. So they would think that uh, maybe it's some wild revelation that you've had. Uh-huh. So I, I realize that with relationships, when you open up, it makes you blessed. And then it even affects your message. It affects your message because somebody can preach without a window. And I, I watch quietly because I don't get much from it. I realize that you are just sharing something, but you yourself, you. Yeah. When, when I was in uh, Madagascar, one of the things that I was praying for was I was praying for pillars. By God's way, God gave, gave us some pillars. Then I noticed that. There was something wrong. Even though I was even though I was teaching them, I mean God has called you, you can do the work. I noticed that there was something wrong with Yeah, we, we, the way they receive what I told them. And on Fridays the pastors and the shepherds we every Friday pastors and shepherds we have an all night. So one time we were praying and then I just heard God telling me, I've called you, not them. So I said, I just closed the prayer meeting and then I said, look, we have closed the whole night. Everybody go and sleep. So I, I stayed and I was praying and I was listening to a message. And then Bishop gave an example and he said, uh, that uh, Reverend Kingsley said, he said that somebody is not engaging the lives of the people. So I, I thought about it. That how can you engage it? That he went on to say, you must get involved deeper into the lives of the people. So the following Sunday when I went to church, I called them one by one. I said, you, are you in a relationship? What, what are you thinking about? What do you want to do after school? And one of them told me, oh, he had a lady that he wanted to marry, but the lady had gone to Egypt. And you like to marry an Egyptian because the lady is a nice Egyptian. <laughs> so I began to tell him that, you want to marry an Egyptian? You are Malagasy. Can you eat Egyptian food? And since then, I noticed that the church has changed. They, Things that I don't even tell them to do, they do. They call me. I have come here. They are, meanwhile, they are students. They will take money, call me every day. All my shepherds are calling me, and I notice that. Yeah, from Madagascar. As I was sitting here, a call was coming, and I just cut it. <laughs> and I notice that, uh, you know, they never formally. They never said, "Oh, pastor, thank you for." coming to Madagascar. But now, they will just, Pastor, thank you for coming to Madagascar. If you had not been you, oh, by now, I'm sure I would, I would have impregnated a girl. Thank you for coming to Madagascar. And I noticed that, it, even, it, <coughs> it has affected the church so much that, it has affected the church, it has affected the church, that when people come to the church, they think that, we knew, like, some of, we knew each other before I came to Madagascar. They asked, oh, did you know them before you came to Madagascar? I said, oh, no, I met them in Madagascar. I said, eh? I noticed that, no, something has changed. <laughs> that, 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 that phrase, that point, engaging the lives of the people, or engaging the people, you see, that is something that brings about church growth. It's a human being with problems, difficulties, 
shame, fears, struggles, desire for prosperity, desire to live, to die to live long, fear of dying, just like you. There's nobody to talk about with all these things till you came along. And when you came along, you were ready to talk about everything that others never talk about. Only you talk about it. Do you understand? That is the pastor. And that is what we mean by engaging the life or engaging the people. You go into them and engage. Do you understand? Yeah. And then you are involved in their lives. And when there is a crisis, there is a problem, there is a situation, usually the engagement gets deeper. Because crises draw us together even more. Are you with me? So, that is important, you know, for us as we move along. Now, one of the important things also about walking in the light is that you are going to have real wild challenges. Now, one of the difficult things when you are when a war is being fought against you and you are not allowed to say anything about it that is when there is a great power fighting you do you understand now that is what Satan loves to do to fight pastors in a way they can't talk about If your underparts are hurting you or itching you, you can't stand and say, Oh, my uh, this thing is itching. You can't say it. But if your elbow, so my elbow is really hurting me today. Have you ever heard somebody say, Oh, my elbow is really hurting. Oh, my head is aching. Oh, my head. Why don't they say those places? Do you think that those other places never have any they even sometimes have more problems than other places but they don't say because you have been attacked at a place that you can't say are you getting something there when we walk in the light and we come out that thing which they thought was a secret attack which you could never discuss, talk about, or fight, it comes to a place where you can now talk about it. And then you'll be surprised that the solution is some very simple key. I mean, there, there may be some small cream that if you told me about that thing, I would have given you the name of you that just gone to get it now by tomorrow morning. Then maybe some of you are suffering from such <laughs> what do you call it here now? But you, you can't easily say it. Now, when my son was sent to uh, secondary school, he was really bullied out of hatred. And I told him, when you go, they'll hate you because you are a half caste. And they hated him. And because he's a pastor's son also. Now, but one of the big problems was that they couldn't say what they were suffering. Yeah. They couldn't, it's like when you say, you, your life will get worse. The guys will take you on in a very well. You'll be very. It will get worse. So you see, that's what the devil loves to do. It's like let's take you on in a way you can't talk about. And most of our lives, let's say our marriages, our personal lives, our personal problems. You understand difficulties and so on. He takes us on in, in a way that we don't see. And then the next thing you hear is an explosion. Look at this, what has happened. A beast has come. Many pastors have problems with uh, pornography. Yes. Yes. Pornography. Masturbation. Uh, 
homosexuality, uh, alcohol, homosexuality, marital, wild, strange marital beasts. Impotence. (laughs) You get it? By the way it is. You can't say it. But if you walk in the light, when the problem comes, you see that you are already in the light. You say problem. Do you know that a lot of people who find us in Lighthouse very strange when we talk about sex and those things? Because we brought it into the light. They are so shocked when they go, ah, what are you saying? Hey, what? it is so unusual because in many other places, that thing is totally behind the curtains. Totally. And, and yet, very active. And yet, a problem. You know? Yeah. They have not seen a book like the model marriage. Yeah. They they are amazed. And when I was when I was drawing the uh, pictures, and I was getting those pictures and so on, a lot of people were opposing me from putting those pictures. I had even more that I have I didn't put in there. <laughs> Uh, I almost almost those pictures were out of the book you know almost the ones that were in it were almost out what, what you have there is the, sub, it's the subset I employed an artist to, 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 to draw these things yeah, with 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 with. Uh, uh, I mean, I I, I employed. I'm not going to the teachers. <laughs> Look, you don't have any idea. But this is what people don't want us to bring outside. And then it's always. Shh. Meanwhile, your husband wants to have sex with your anus every day. <laughs> you, you don't walk in the light, so you can't say it. You can never say it. I know a Christian couple that divorced based on this. The, the lady said, Look, Enos, no, no vagina is no juice again. <laughs> Enos only. A-A-O. <laughs> Fantastical, but you cannot say it. You cannot say it because you have been attacked at the private place. Mm. It's like saying it's like how would it be understood? Yeah. All that you have to do is to say, is it right? Is it good? Before you realize you are wearing <laughs> <laughs> Father, thank you for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen.